Well, it is that time of year again. CNBC is out with our Disruptor 50, a list of 50 companies shaking up their industry and reforming the way they operate. Number 28 on this year's list is no stranger to our Fast Money crypto audience. Ripple making its debut on the Disruptor 50 list. CEO Brad Garlinghouse joins us now. Brad, great to see you again. Welcome back to Fast Money. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you again, and uh, this, despite the weird times. Yeah, very strange times indeed. Um, on this day that you debut on, on the Disruptor 50 list, you're also making a, an announcement yourself in terms of your, your backing of Pay ID. Can you explain what this is and why this sort of simplifies how crypto um, had transferred money in the past? Absolutely. So at its core, Ripple has been all about enabling what we call an internet of value. Let's make all of these different networks that really don't talk to each other interoperable. We've all had the experience where, you know, when you ask a friend, you say, hey, I need to pay you money. Are you on Venmo? Are you on PayPal? Or outside the United States, maybe Alipay or PayU. Isn't it funny, when I ask somebody for a phone number, I don't say, are you on AT&T? Are you on Verizon? I just get their phone number. The idea behind Pay ID is to simplify the ability to send someone money the same way, to make it easy, as easy as sending an email. I don't ask someone, are you on Google or Yahoo? I just send an email. And so Pay ID enables, whether you're a large bank or I'll use a, a very successful regional bank in Chicago called Byline Bank, if you're an account holder there and I want to send you money, it should be as easy as typing Brad dollar sign Garlinghouse. And it, whether it's resolving to a, a Byline Bank or to Bitcoin, you know, all of those naming infrastructure can be much more much simplified and interoperable. I want to try and understand more what and who this disrupts. So who do you see as the main user of this sort of technology? Is it consumer to consumer money transfer or ultimately could it be a company paying another company for, uh, I don't know, buying a, buying a unit of theirs, for instance, or inventory or I mean, how big could this be? Well, so let me start by saying something about the word disruption in that sentence. I actually don't look at this. Uh, we're thrilled and honored to be on the disruptor list. I think disruptor, particularly in Silicon Valley, can be a word that's kind of overused. That you know, it worked for Uber, it worked for some, but I think to some degree, it's not about move fast and break stuff. It's about building, it's about partnering and enabling. So when I think about what Pay ID is doing, and really when I think about what Ripple's doing overall, how do we partner with the industry and make it more efficient? How do we make it better for consumers? How do we make it better for small businesses? What we're seeing with Pay ID is not that it's going to disrupt a bank or disrupt a payment provider. It's going to make them more efficient. It's going to reduce friction. It's going to make it easier for consumers, for small businesses. And if we can reduce the friction of payments, we actually can unlock a lot of things we don't really think about. Micropayments. I mean, there's a whole bunch of kind of almost science fiction, Blade Runner kind of examples that if the friction of a payment can go to zero, it's going to make all of our lives a lot simpler, a lot better. It's going to bring people into the financial community that are either underbanked or unbanked. All right. Brad, we're going to leave it there, but it's always great to speak with you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Brad Garlinghouse. You can find the full Disruptor 50 list at CNBC.com. Again, that was Ripple, um, which, of course, you might know XRP, the cryptocurrency. Uh, Karen, what do you mean? I mean, this, this Ripple, a lot of Ripple's customers are, in fact, banks. So this is not necessarily a disruption to the banks. But he makes a good point in terms of removing that friction of transaction. Right. Well, that makes sense. So I guess I think this is more evolution than um, than disruption. But I'm also wondering sort of uh, on a related note about in this post covid world, people are probably going to want to use cash, physical cash, a lot less and have, you know, touchless uh, inter interactions. And I wonder if that will improve the adoption more quickly of some of these other payments. 